or going out for a jog and an 18 miller taking them out like a lot a a ton like every year from every grade somebody died so you kind of always had this thing like is it me like is it gonna be me and so when i started working at this florist i had to start burying people that i knew and it was like at a young age and i an ex-boyfriend of mine actually um had died and uh doing his funeral flowers was really difficult like being a young high schooler and like burying your ex-boyfriend who died on lsd is like fucking crazy wait lsd didn't kill him he did something he did something (laughs) yeah while on lsd um and and so this idea of the ridiculous and the tragic and the and this weird humor in it pre 9-11 had already started to manifest in my early development Welcome to What's My Thesis. I'm your host, Javier Proenza, and today my guest is Emily Silver. We're in your space. Yeah. For the people that are listening, we work in a lot of different colors. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do loom stuff, but you also do sculptural stuff. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, obviously you're, te- you're, you're in the sculpture department, so that is the background, mm-hmm. right? The, yeah. The main, but uh, how do you see, I mean, I guess like tapestries are sort of 3d object at least more so than like a painting on a frame right yeah i like to think of them as soft paintings but also as sculptures at the same mm-hmm. time uh, i have a background in sculpture i started as a painter i think everyone kind of starts painting maybe when they're younger it's like a thing uh when i was really really young and then when i went to undergrad i got the sculpture bug and that was kind of it for me i just mm-hmm. you know building shit breaking shit putting things back together and then like what kind of shit early on what were the first things you were breaking and putting back together you're like damn this is cool god i i lived in new york city so it was like you know i lived in new york city and 9 11 had just happened and it felt like i think that was actually like a i didn't actually think i was gonna talk about that the pivotal moment for me actually i felt like everything shifted for everyone, but being, you know, I was like 21 blocks from the buildings when, it, when they went down and this idea of it, the absurd came up for me and, uh, and tragedy mm-hmm. and that's all in my work. So like the absurd and the tragic and then humor is, uh, really, really important to me. It's kind of at my core and that ha- having lived through that, um, really influenced the shift from painting to sculpture. I remember making a massive painting and I didn't have any money. And so I stole a roadblock from um, 14th street, like a big wooden roadblock. What's oh, a roadblock. Sorry. Like they blocked the road off and they had big giant oh, okay. pieces of wood on stand on stand. So you couldn't drive down the road. Mm. And I just dragged it all the way to the building on 17th and fifth and, and chopped it up into pieces and built my first structure out of that and made this really sculptural painting uh, there you go, Homeland Security. Yeah. <laughs> this is my job. I bust people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a true patriot. <laughs> 22 years later. And uh, and that moment, I think of like scavenging for material, which became a thing because, you know, broke college student in New York is just full of trash that you can just cut up and yeah. make into stuff. And uh, and ever bring any any bed bugs? I did not bring any bed bugs. However, I knew many people, you know, mattresses are a thing in beginning sculpture, like in New York, that was a big thing. It's like baby heads with nails in them and uh, dirty mattresses were a thing, (laughs) you know, here in LA, when I teach, it's uh, everybody wants to make fucking wings. So it's like, I don't allow anybody to make wings. What do you mean wings? I don't, I give an assignment and everyone's like, I'm going to make a set of wings. It always, I don't know, it comes up all the time. What's her, what's her name? The woman from The Simple Life, the, uh, not um, Paris Hilton, but the other one, Lionel Richie's daughter. Didn't she ruin that by getting that tattoo of the wings? Like, oh, I, isn't that, that's like so 2010s. See, I don't know. I should bring that reference up for now. You guys are a decade late. <laughs> Look at this. This is what you want to make? <laughs> I, I, I tell them no wings. It's like the first day of class. I'm like, no wings. And I can just see like yeah some souls slightly crushed they're like i really wanted to make wings um so yeah that's where that started sculpture started in that moment where i was like it was so less about the painting that ended up happening it was more about the the building and that the Mm -hmm. dragging and the cutting up and then and then from there i just started um turning you know a lot of shit around me into sculptures um Mm -hmm. yeah a lot of scrap scrap wood and fabric and Did you ever get into like ready-mades or it was always, uh, you know, breaking stuff and putting it back together? A little bit of ready-mades, but mostly um, 
this kind of shift of things that we recognize and reorganizing them into things. Like I, I built a, a big hot air balloon that crashed into the side of the building in the building that we were working in, but it was all out of scraps. And I learned how to, you know, build a motor. And so, so you crashed it into the building or it crashed into the <laughs> it building? It looked like it crashed into okay. the building. Yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a lie. It didn't okay. <laughs> so you installed it to appear like it had yeah. crashed. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like uh, wove cardboard. So, you know, like shit material that gets really elevated. So yeah. Yeah. Thing with that. Cool. And then uh, when did you buy your first loom? Oh, this is pretty new. That the weaving happened this year, actually. Oh, okay. So this yeah. is like completely new. Yeah, really. Oh, wow. And it's interesting because it took me a really fucking long time to come to find this, and it feels like, oh yeah, that's the thing that I've been looking for. I I don't know if you just post a lot, but I don't think I've scrolled down far enough to see the non loom stuff oh, on your yeah. on your Instagram. I, I I'm go now. I have. A reason to do it <laughs> to yeah. go down to the bottom of the, to the first post yeah that i you'll see that it comes out of video work i do okay. a lot of animation and gif like i use um social media in the stories to make i started that about uh five years ago when the gif first came out in the stories oh, okay and i'm saying. only reminded that it was five years ago because uh instagram or facebook told me in a memory recently yeah, yeah. of the of the thing and i started uh making these collages in stories until the app would break. It would like turn off on me and shut off and I'd have to start over or I'd save it and then bring it back in and then layer it and layer it and layer it. And then I started making paintings from those. I thought okay. that was an interesting conversation between like the digital and the painting and kind of romanticizing this digital space that we live and now more so than ever, we live these kind of dual lives between social media and and reality and like what you're saying, like, I mean, we haven't met until today because yeah, yeah. it's only been through social media. So it's really interesting, like how <laughs> and what the, people know about you. Also, the other fun thing about that is that like when you set up meetings and then like you had a leak, so we had to reschedule and that like we've been like planning to meet for a longer time. So that makes us even more invested. Yeah. Like it's like a weird I've had like Instagram friendships before, but like that pre-meeting of like, no, 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 this has to happen now. Yeah. <laughs> like it's destined. We got to get this done, you know? Yeah. So, so I'm really excited to be here. Um, do you, so what, what is that stuff? Is that, is that, <laughs> that's just plaster? The frame? Yeah, the frame. So it's uh, wood first. Uh -huh. I cut these kind of weird shapes out of wood and then there's foam, like a spray foam on it. Okay. And then I plaster it with, bandages and then i uh, like plaster of paris bandages yeah. oh, okay and then on top the cake like stuff is a i'm telling you all my secrets oh no you didn't have to no it's fine <laughs> i'm okay with it um is a uh modeling paste okay a, a lightweight modeling paste that i tint and then i paint it mm -hmm. yeah it does have a very icing feeling to it yeah there's a lot of uh like do you go big on birthdays like, are you <laughs> the celebratory is like definitely rooted in, in the work for, for real. Are you, um, but like, are you someone that bakes cakes and is like, Hey, it's your day. And then, <laughs> Cause I don't feel like from looking at the work, it feels like that vibe, but I don't feel like you are that person. No, I'm that... not that person. It's a, I'm like a very introvert extrovert. Like my work is loud. I dress very colorfully and, but I'm like, I'm a bit of a loner, actually, which yeah, yeah. is like an interesting thing. And as I get older, I learn more. I accept it more and I learn that more. And um, but no, I don't really go over the top. I used to work in. So the the lineage in the work also comes from I was a floral designer. at oh. I started at 16 and uh, but I was really focused in funeral work um, and, and I worked at a mortuary and. And then I, so the industry has been doing flowers at the mortuary. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I st so when I was sixteen, I lived in this very odd small town in upstate New York. Okay. Um, shout out to anyone who I might still know there that's actually going to listen to this. Are you not going to say the name? Uh, Is the it a town secret? of Bethlehem, <laughs> <laughs> outside of Albany, which you know Albany's a shithole. Um, I'm going there in two weeks. That's, that's where uh, Nexium is from. Yeah. Yes. 
cults. And you know I love a good cult. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I am not branded. Nobody put anything on my body from, from there. Uh, if you don't know what the Nexium thing is, you need to go watch the special on that. Yeah, the second the second season is actually better than the first. I think yeah. uh, on on HBO the one the vow. Yeah, yeah the yeah. vow is fucking intense. This yeah. the second one is like they try to to give Nancy some room. They give her enough rope to hang herself. Yeah, <laughs> of course that's how they roll with this. Um, it's kind of brutal. You should watch it though. It is pretty yeah, yeah. interesting. No, it's great. Yeah. Um. So when I I lived in this town where we had very odd deaths every year. So like young kids died every year, like freak accidents, like someone flying out of the back of a car, somebody falling out of a window. Um, we always just kind of were curious which one would Sounds be. Sounds like bad parenting. Yeah, it was a lot of that. Or going out for a jog and an 18 miller taking them out. Like a lot, a, t a ton, like every year from every grade, somebody died. So you kind of always had this thing like, is it me? Like, is it going to be me? And so when I started working at this florist I had to start burying people that I knew and it was like at a young age and I an ex-boyfriend of mine actually um had died and uh doing his funeral flowers was really difficult like being a young high schooler and like burying your ex-boyfriend who died on LSD is like fucking crazy wait LSD didn't kill him he did something he did something <laughs> yeah while on LSD um, and, and so this idea of the ridiculous and the tragic and the, and this weird humor in it pre 9-11 yeah. had already started to manifest in my early development. And, uh, How do, do you hate that show six feet under? Uh, I no, I liked it. I mean, okay. I get asked that like, all, all the time. Yeah. Or like my girl. Cause I definitely was like that. And you know, growing up, dude, and, I was not ready for that movie when I was a oh kid and I went God. to watch fucking Macaulay Culkin from home alone. Holy shit. And <laughs> bees. I'm like, come on. It's way too much. It's like, what's it? Uh, Kevin McAllister just dies. <laughs> I know. Right. Like right off the bat too. Fuck. Yeah, that was yeah. an intense one. I felt like I was living that a little bit. With that. Um, yeah. And then I, you know, I stayed, it was in the floral industry for a really long time. And it, that's a fucking nightmare. Like I hate brides. Mm -hmm. I hate weddings. So when you think, when you talk about like parties and stuff, um, but I love the, uh, how fucking weird it is and yeah, the psychology yeah. behind it and like how people go crazy. And when I moved to LA, I um, worked at a mortuary in North Hollywood and I only did floral stuff for the for the funerals and what celebrities did you bury is that is that where this is going or no no i oh, okay. wasn't gonna go to celebrities <laughs> that. but i spent so much time in cemeteries so bring my lunch and eat in the cemetery and uh i was like such a voyeur for funerals so i would like sit behind trees and watch funerals from a distance like the whole service happen and it's so interesting to just watch how people gather and grieve in spaces and then like when they leave there's maybe an hour and then the groundskeepers come out and they like take all the flowers and they just shove them on top of the the ground on top of the body on um, as a as a inter or no well they is put it? the dirt on it and then the, and then all these arrangements that were thousands and thousands of dollars and massive sculptures right the, the arrangements i'm making are like casket size so you know six eight feet eight feet large um whoa yeah massive so you know and like i get called in if like someone's leaking like in the casket they're like we need a we need a boutonniere he leaked on his shirt you know so like i'm in there and there's like fluid coming out of somebody and i'm in their face and putting flowers <laughs> like uh, an oddly large boutonniere for somebody that would never need one in their casket to this hide. this side of you does not show up on instagram <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm loving this yeah. i am also a dark morose person yeah and that is very like happy and outgoing you know but yeah. like also like sometimes i talk about things and, and i'm like oh yeah people don't spend yeah. hours listening to stuff about cults or murder and stuff i'm all about murder i watch a lot of murder things and do you listen to last podcast not last no. podcast okay what do you listen to? i listen to um well i was into um my favorite murder and then they got they started talking like ghost stories and shit and i was like nah it's not funny anymore um uh morbid i like okay i've um, heard of that one I just was really deep into In My Own Backyard podcast. Did you mm -hmm. listen no. to that one? Oh, he just like totally cracked the case. And this Friday, there's a whole Dateline episode about how this podcast cracked the case. What case is it? Um, no, I don't remember her name. Oh, okay. But what like, what, but, but She's it's... from San Luis Obispo, and she was a student at San Luis Obispo that went missing at a party, and it was... Um, you guys, I'm sorry. I can't remember. No, name. no, that's okay. It's um, 
anyways, he started a podcast about it and in, investigating it and like totally to help totally crack the case. It. Nice. So this Friday, I know you're, this isn't going to air until like way later, but you can look <laughs> it up on Dateline. I'm a Dateline fanatic. I like love Dateline. Dateline, um, NBC. I'm trying to remember what kind of content they do. Well, you've got um, uh, Keith Harrison is like the main guy that the host and uh-huh. then there's he has an instagram account keith leaning on things because he's always leaning on things so there's this amazing <laughs> instagram of him just images of him leaning like on posts Does and... he, is he self-aware no, enough to have made it and run it or someone runs it oh someone runs okay. it for him <laughs> it's I'm like sure. a fan yeah it's a fan page i i'm not sure if he is aware he has to be aware of it yeah you know, it's a good um yeah morbid and the crime junkies i'm really into crime junkies that's a great one so then go, going back to the oh, yeah. mortuary. The mortuary, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like uh, what what kind of stuff do you see when you're like a voyeur? Like what what are the notes that you took as you were observing people grieving? Like what do what is grief like from that perspective? Um, it's really, um, it's beautiful from the, from the background, right? Like you just see all these people coming together and you don't know their stories. You can see who shows up late, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> you can see who's there really early and and then who who stays for a long time. Um, it depends uh, on how religious they are as well. You can definitely see that come through the ceremony. Um, you can see who's bold in their outfits, like everyone's wearing black, and then someone like me shows up in like a, <laughs> like a flower. Of Wait, is that thing. how you're hanging out at the? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like it. for people listening. Yeah. It's a very, very amazing, cool. It's a jumpsuit, right? It's a jumpsuit. Yeah, it's an yeah. awesome floral jumpsuit with like purple and orange, but yeah. not appropriate for a funeral. No, definitely. perfect for this podcast. Though. Yeah, yeah. I tend to dress like my work. Uh, so the yeah, and and. And interesting just to see, like, I'm always interested in how the celebratory is like, there's such a peak build up to something and then it's severed so quickly, right? It ends faster. It's all, all about the build up, right? It mm. isn't even about the moment. It's, and then it's over. Um, so just kind of watching that and you see how many flowers there are too is really interesting. I can usually tell if it was someone young or old. The younger they are, the more flowers there are. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes people, you know, get mom spelled out really big in flowers. And um, yeah, it's just quiet and interesting. It's sad, um, but it's also kind of beautiful because it's part of, it's all part of this process. We have no choice. We're going to die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I spent a lot of time thinking about mortality and, and all Well, of it's that. such a fascinating industry. I mean, I, I understand yeah. why they make shows about it and stuff. It would be interesting to see a reality show. Like, yeah. uh, so is there an equivalent to a bridezilla in the grief world where someone's just like, they're grieving and they like lay into somebody and obviously sympathy in that case, but... Is that, does that happen? Yeah. I mean, people are, um, they're not at their best at at this time. Yeah. It's it's a tough thing. Um, and California is interesting because I, I had actually really considered becoming, um, you don't have to be, I'm really forgetting all my language today. You can become like a, a death. Uh, or like a funeral director in a, in a very easy way. It's not like a, you're like a counselor, right? Mm-hmm. So you're the person that you're the death party planner, basically. And uh, you don't have to go through a ton of school for it, right? Like mm-hmm. you can actually work and be the person who's like the point person for the funerals. And you're the person that walks them through the whole process. And I found that really interesting. And I almost like kind of quit the teaching path to... Mm-hmm go into that. I was really interested. And this has come up a few times. Like I, I'm also a big yogi and I went into yoga therapy for a while and wanted to just do death doula stuff, like work with people on their way out. Um, but the, so the funeral industry, the reason why I didn't fully go with it is it's an industry, right? And it is kind of like, it's hard to watch people talk behind the scenes about the money I mean, it's the same with weddings. I mean, I worked since I hate the wedding industry. I did so many big weddings and the amount of money that people drop. But yes, there are like death zillas, I guess. Mm -hmm. People are just really in shock usually too. So they're not, it's usually an immediate thing. You have to plan a funeral like pretty close after the death of someone. So it's not, you're definitely not seeing someone in their finest. They're also like really hard at making decisions. And that was hard for me because I feel like that's where if someone's in the industry, that's, 
a business person, they're taking advantage of that moment. And for me, I would just probably give everything away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, can we just have it? Well, that's, really. what the, I mean, what you described as the, the count, the point person is probably how you saw it. But when you, it seems like after you looked after uh, behind the curtain, that's also the salesperson, right? Yeah. 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 And, and then it makes me think of uh, the big Lebowski It's like, we're bereaved. We're not saps. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if this is too dark of a story. You tell me, but uh, when my grandfather passed away, I went to his funeral in Miami and my dad um, was like there and the whole family was there. And there was like a, this weird delay that wasn't being resolved at the wake. And we just kept waiting and waiting. And finally, my dad, like they basically hadn't preserved him correctly. Oh. And they showed my dad like a a a, 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 a corpse that was like, pretty farly like pretty badly decomposed so they didn't even show it at the wake and it was like it, i can't imagine how traumatic that was for him i'm lucky i only heard about it yeah but um but it is interesting like did you uh, there's a there's there was a netflix show called uh, haunting of hill house where the main character is a where one, well it's a family that runs a mortuary but one of the main characters is the person that does the makeup mm. and makes people look presentable mm -hmm. and uh there's like the, it, I, the last episode of it, it, it which doesn't really ruin the whole show it's just kind of sappy mm -hmm. but everything up until that is like pretty intense and really interesting but i i had never really considered why someone like it did a really good job of illustrating why that person loves their job and why that person like what that person does for people mm -hmm. helps people like grieve you know yeah, yeah. Uh, which is really interesting i remember seeing my grandmother and she had a smile and that weirded me out yeah <laughs> but they do that you know they do that and there's something about that i learned with it was that the psychology of our brain and how we see people right and so when you're bringing people into the wake and it's an open casket, the one thing that they tell you is like everyone that comes in at first is going to think that person's breathing. Yeah. So you're going to hear that a lot, which is true. I heard it all the time. And like, wow. and I had to be trained for that too, that they're not breathing, but we're so used to seeing the movement of the body just moving up and down that our brain does that immediately. We see wow. someone dead and we think that they're alive a little bit, or we want, we think we see them move or we, and that it's just our, it's just a trick that's happening because we're so used to seeing that body move. That's wild. Yeah. It's so interesting. Um, any thoughts about uh, any last morbid thoughts about this before I start asking you about Bridezilla's? <laughs> no, I, you know, I, no, I, I'll talk about death all day long. I mean, that's, <laughs> well, we yeah. can come back yeah. to it. I mean, I just know that Bridezilla's are very popular on YouTube, so I don't want to miss an opportunity to speak to somebody that Am knows. Am I going to get tagged for Bridezilla's? No, it's hilarious. <laughs> well, what's the craziest story that you, the thing that ever happened? Did you ever see like, I, okay, things that are popular on YouTube are people cheating in the bathroom oh. uh, right before the wedding. Um that's not a bridezilla story but just like any 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 wedding gossip that we can entertain ourselves with at the expense of others um i'm trying to think everyone's like usually there's just like a lot of shit-faced people before the <laughs> wedding and you're like embarrassed for them you're yeah. like god this is such a bad look for you and the the couple or or just people in the in... a lot of people in the wedding like the bridal shower with bridal people yeah or the brides yeah um, too much champagne and they don't eat oh, that's a big yeah. thing um the mothers are the fucking worst yes. and that happens like in the series of meeting with the brides like working up to their wedding um and there's just I have a hard time acting like pretend pretending to care too like I <laughs> I couldn't take the one on ones alone sometimes because I'm just like you're so fucking annoying. <laughs> like, it's just like, um, but I, it's mostly just really, um, you have to really be pay attention to detail yeah. because that's what they're harping on is that they want this, per they have this picture of a perfect day. That's so much money. Yeah, and yeah. there's this kind of suspension from reality. So day of is always like you try and be invisible as, as possible. Like, cause you just don't want to be in the line of fire. Mm -hmm. And I've just seen people. These are supposed to be blue. Yeah. There's, they treat people really poorly a lot of the time. And it's yeah. not usually the bride always, it tends to be like the mom or somebody who's in charge, like the maid of honor or something. Yeah, yeah. And, um, they don't tip a lot of the time when they're supposed to, you know, it's oh, like wow. a shitty ass tip in the end. Um, but, the it's just a lot of work it's a lot of work it's a lot of, it seems pretty because flowers are pretty but they're fucking dirty 
and heavy and wet. And, you know, it's like a lot of moving large wet sculptures, you yeah. know, and making sure that they don't break. So yeah. it's, you know, that, that kind of load in and load out is, is a lot of stress. What were the labor laws when you were 16 in your state of New York? <laughs> Cause you could work at 16. You could? Yeah. Wow. I worked at Kmart and there I had to work two jobs. So I was working wow. at Kmart and at the flower shop. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess that tells us something about the difference between our economic backgrounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you talk about how the dark stuff shows up into these colorful pieces specifically like what what, what are you because i mean obviously there's a balance there right it's like really loud and attention getting but then yeah uh what do you what do you want to people to take away from a piece you know yeah i think that there's like humor in them and they're bright and colorful so they're attractive right like you're attracted to them um, like rats, like rat shiny stuff, we're the same way, right? So we. Oh, I didn't know that about yeah. rats. So we like, uh, we get drawn in with color. I think um, there's a lot of chaos in the work, and it it pulls you in, and then if you stay with it, you start to see these kind of grotesque things that come out. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of them, there's a lot of kind of coding in the work as well. Like I use a lot of the same imagery over and over again. You see some eggs? Yeah. I have a lot of eggs in the work. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, and a lot of weird tongued uh, Gene Simmons characters. Yeah. A lot of mouths, big teeth. Long tongues. Kind of ghosts. And um, yeah, a lot of dealing with kind of memory and um, and chaos, a lot of longing that happens and then just kind of this idea of being overwhelmed like that comes in a lot yeah definitely yeah uh and then your process with these ones we've got i mean uh, uh you basically take these felt uh paintings right let's call them that is, sure. is that are you comfortable with that terminology yeah, what do you how do you internally like this bullshit you know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you call it in your head i guess i think of them as like soft paintings okay yeah, yeah. yeah. i think i borrowed your 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 so then you have this, it's like laid out on a felt thing mm -hmm. and then you have felt layers, but then you chop them in like horizontal stri strips. Yeah. Yeah. Right now I've been doing that. So I have a felt loom and I make the backing on that one that you're looking at. And a lot of them is, um, just, just a packing blanket. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then I get felt in different fibers and I make these layered collages and I run them through the felt loom, which is the big silver loom on the table. And that is a, just 200 needles and it has a motor and it just kind of, you put it through and it has a motor, it pulls the, the piece through and kind of jams the material into itself. Does it separate, like you basically just put this mm -hmm. whole piece through intact or do you cut it up before uh, it goes through? This has gone through probably 20 times through the felt loom. The one you're looking at, this one? that's how oh. it's all attached. Oh, None of it's okay. glued I or see, anything. I see yeah. the imprints. Yeah. Okay. So and there's then, no glue involved or anything like that. And then the, when you get it to this stage, yes. with, with that has you can see like fibers holding stuff together? Yeah. And then I'll cut them up and I use that so as you do like cut the up. weft. Yeah. In the, that's, those are done on the Sayori loom, which is just a two shaft loom, which is like a freestyle loom. There's not really any She's rules. got two looms, guys. I have three. I just got this big. <laughs> it's like the size of a piano over there. When I went to get it, I'm like, fuck, it's so big. Um, I haven't learned fully how to use that. It's a big eight shaft loom. Um, it, that one I love because it has all the industrial switches on it. <laughs> yeah. It came covered, actually, like a bunch of sheet metal on it. And like uh -huh. you couldn't see all this stuff. And this is like the cheaper version of what you can get. And so I used... I went to a workshop a year ago and used the, the more expensive one and realized mine didn't work as well. So I just took a bunch of pictures of that one and then rehabbed this one to be as close as possible. So oh. I like lowered, I took the metal off, I uncovered things, I lowered um, the space and where the needles were it was much higher. So I wasn't getting the same compression in the fabric. So I um, had that lowered. And so it, it's kind of working more like the more expensive one now. What is that like YouTube knowledge? How did you, what, what, where did you learn how to uh, modify your loom? Oh, I take, I know how to take shit apart. And then I have a friend. Of so mine. it wasn't just uh, like what a road blockers. It's uh, <laughs> you used to actually take apart electronics. Can you, you can solder and stuff. Yeah, I can solder. Awesome. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That's cool. uh yeah, I'm pretty self-taught on those things. The, the loom I had help with um, that my tech at school, uh, Brennan Wheeler, shout out to Brennan Wheeler. Um, he, shout out Brennan. Yeah, he's, he's the shit. He's also fearless with like taking shit apart and is really smart. So we, 
I took all the videos and the documents and then we looked at it together and then we figured it out and then tried different weight stuff. So it was a, it was a dual, um, that's really yeah, impressive really because that is like i'm intimidated <laughs> <laughs> especially because it doesn't look like something you paid 20 bucks for um it's not 20 bucks for i know, sure, I know for yeah. sure. <laughs> you guys can't see it but it's like industrial steel yeah and uh we can and, take a picture of it yeah, yeah. It up if you want to see it uh, but I mean, what's I, this space is pretty cool. I can, I can dig it. And I love like the idea. I just actually, I spent most of my drawing career only drawing in like black and white, which is, I was telling you before that I just recently started painting because I like, I like, I even just like taking paint out of the tube, Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. I know that's sacrilege, but I'm not a painter. That's my excuse. I say I'm that. like, I'm like, I'm a shitty painter. I can do whatever the fuck I want then. Right. <laughs> I'm like Puff Daddy, who wasn't a rapper. He was an entertainer. <laughs> and that's why you couldn't criticize him. <laughs> Those are good rules to live by. That's really good. Yeah. Oh my God! If you were twenty years younger, you wouldn't find that funny at all. No, I, they may not get the reference at all. It happens when I'm teaching, and I'm like, God, oh, I don't understand what I'm talking about at all. Ever. Yeah. So, so what, sorry, were you gonna say something? No, you were gonna, you were saying something about the space and painting out of the tube. Oh no, I, j I mean, it's a nice. It's I love uh, I love going into people's studios. It's it's really cool, and it just seems like a place where you get a lot of work done. And I got to give props to the carpets because that I think that the carpets, if it was just the hardwood floor, it wouldn't have the warmth that you mm -hmm. feel like being in the space, you know. Yeah. I feel like you can always get inspired when you look down, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have a, it's a weird thing. I have like such a, um, first of all, it's not usually this messy. The loom just got here. It's fucking massive and I have to figure out what to do with it. And I had uh, a bunch of work that just came back to the studio. So it's really full. But the, um, the rug thing is important because I have to like nest in my space. Like it has to feel like really warm and comfortable and desirable for me to want to go there. Most studios have always been fucking cold. There's never any heat. That's why I always have a heater coming around with me. I don't even have heat in here, but every studio has just been like a cement slab and like a leaky fucking ceiling and half the shit doesn't work. And mm -hmm. Um, I realized that the more it feels like home or comfortable, it's my favorite space to be in, the more work I get done. And so like, you're right. Rugs have fucking changed everything. Yeah, no, I, I totally like, I mean, you I've made a point to make sure it's in the video because <laughs> it really does make a difference and it works really well with the, like you would typically think that you want less clutter so that the work can stand out. But I think in this case, it kind of like if the, if the walls are down, you know, like if you, cause you yeah. said that you're going to be taking all this work down, like, uh, because you got to make some new stuff, right? Yeah. When you take, the, when the walls are empty, I'm sure you feel the emptiness as oh, opposed yeah. to it just being like a regular sterile room yeah. with no, with no stuff on the walls. Yeah. And I'm a total maximalist, you can tell. So yeah. it's like having pattern on the floor is, it just helps me stay grounded. Um, I think maybe it makes other people crazy, the amount of shit going on, but pattern on pattern and on pattern is, is yeah. feels really good to me. Yeah. My friend, uh, Jackie Perez, uh, dresses not exactly the same as you, but always like not even, I, I wouldn't say clashing colors, but that's how I was taught when I was working in retail that you don't mac that you don't mix patterns. Like some, one time I so wanted to wear, one time I wanted to wear it, this was an American Eagle, uh, a Hawaiian shirt before it became problematic. Like this was in the... <laughs> we have to discuss that you worked at American Eagle, but go yeah. on. <laughs> oh yeah, we can totally get into that. I am not ashamed. In fact, I was super shy and I just got that oh. job so that I would force myself to talk to people. And then they put you on the posters. Did you have Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was never that handsome. I was always oh. hairy, <laughs> too hairy for that. Um, no, uh, so, so yeah, they told me that like you can't wear like plaid with with the what's it called and now i see people breaking that rule all the time and i'm like man we were so conservative back in the day we were patterns and like no yeah. brown and black no red and pink together you know, the, yeah i mean i was I, I one time i wore a brown belt with black shoes and someone said that's so cuban amazing <laughs> i was like okay uh -oh. i didn't even know you couldn't do that <laughs> i guess i just didn't know enough people to dress well <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's a whole story. Like most of my, <laughs> so, uh, I realized recently that I'm good at spotting lying 
because oh. I grew up with so many people that ended up becoming junkies. Oh, you yeah. know, <laughs> so in that environment, I don't think anyone was dressing well. <laughs> right. And I guess Florida, that's Mi a given. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Miami, you know, and, and all of that. But it, it's it's a it's it's a wild. Um, Is bestiality still legal in Florida? Dude, I missed so many opportunities. I didn't know it was. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just, I just, maybe we have to look into that. Yeah, I wish I had my phone handy, yeah. but yeah, no, I mean, I didn't know about that, mm. but we definitely frowned upon it. <laughs> I don't know. I see a lot of datelines from that area, and I'm not sure. There seems to be no rules around it. Uh, <laughs> it's always Florida. Yeah, it always comes back to Florida. Damn. Yeah, Florida is great. I mean, is it? It's great because, like. It's a really easy don't fuck with me card. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> like, it's like, it's like, yo, I'm from Florida, dude. And like, that doesn't even mean anything. And it's then like, people are like, okay. okay. Murder was the case. We got to <laughs> <We gotta. laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, really, well, it means is that I was like a, a grimy middle class kid mm -hmm. that was like, you know, hanging out with other grimy middle class kids. My, d uh, did you ever watch the movie Bully with, by Larry Clark, the guy that made kids? No, I uh, saw Kids. I didn't see Yeah, them, it, this one's much better than Kids. Kids yeah. is all right. Kids was just a big hit because of what it was about at the time. But I think the best Larry Clark movie, I mean, he's a photographer too. He he started, uh, he had a book called Tulsa about like heroin addicts. Uh -huh. So he's like, I just made the connection that that's why he made that movie. Basically, it's about uh, a, a true story about these kids that killed a bully that and and like got charged but like it's the mm -hmm. whole story of it and it's brad renfro or and and like like really like um late 90s kind of uh problematic actors mm -hmm. <laughs> that got into a lot of trouble you know like that kind of almost embody the roles yeah so Influence yeah them in life. yeah but like there's a scene in that where someone gets into the car and he goes hey do you guys have, have any acid and like they have it in the glove box mm -hmm. and i was like oh yeah i yeah. remember yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like two dollars <laughs> it was so cheap you would give it away yeah yeah i do remember that as well yeah it was it was it were you a party kid in uh in albany yeah, I did. I experimented pretty young. I, you know, I, the first time I did. Well, you had two jobs. I mean, you were like middle-aged man by, by yeah, six. Exactly. <laughs> the beard. It was the whole thing. Um, I had probably, you know, I started smoking cigarettes at like at 12. I think mm -hmm. I was smoking a pack a day at 12 camels. Yeah. Oh, wides or just regulars? Just regular okay. camels. And then uh, and smoking weed around then. And then I did mushrooms for my first time, which is funny. I have a mushroom allergy now, but I was, I did mushrooms for my first time when I was in eighth grade. Oh, wow. And, um, do you know the kids I in the hall song? I did all, song? I did all my acid in grade eight. Like that, I've never actually heard it. <laughs> it's a I don't, I remember song. kids in the hall yeah. really well, but I don't remember that song. Now I'm going to have to. It was part of their compilation on. CDs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you can Google it. I did all my acid by grade eight. Yeah. Yeah. That was basically me. Yeah. yeah, yeah that... And I drank a lot and, you know, it was like, I hung out with the bad boys. It was like a thing. And then by the time I was in high school, like 10th grade, I really had my shit together compared to other people. Like I was just kind of done with yeah. it. And I graduated early cause I had to work and put myself through shit. So it was like, and I figured out the system. I realized you didn't actually have to be in high school for four years. Like you could do all these, get your requisites done early. And so, oh, wow. that. um, so you didn't do GED, you, you accelerated. I accelerated. I just graduated a half year early cause I had yeah. to work. So, and it worked out for me, but I, you know, it was funny because the people who gave me, I, I'm the youngest of four and my siblings were like partier. So I lived in a very like heavily, heavy party house. That's probably why you snapped out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I was calling ambulances for people with alcohol poisoning mm -hmm. at like 13. So, uh, so then I became the call for when people my age were actually drinking in high school, like Emily's puking. What do we do? And I'm like, Oh, now you want my help. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you invite I'm me like, to the party? I'm like, who is it? <laughs> oh, Bill, let him fucking suffer. I don't, you know, it's like a whole, uh, I became the queen of holding your hair back basically. Oh, wow. and not, uh, so mom, were you momming these kids or no, I did, you, I, you weren't the mom of the group? Definitely not. You didn't identify as that because no. that's a really annoying thing to do. Yeah. I didn't really end up partying with people my age. I just had older friends. That's how I got into drugs early. And then mm -hmm. I was with older people. And so when they were going through it, I just would get these emergency phone calls. And I didn't really 
hope them. I didn't really do much. <laughs> That's dying from overdosing is so passe. <laughs> <laughs> that was all the stupid alcohol drinking. No, uh, yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of people, like you were saying, OD'd and died. We lost yeah, so yeah. many people from from school. That Sounds like we're of a generation because I think that like, um, e- even in Miami, you know, like uh, my siblings weren't anywhere near what me and my friends were. Like, mm-hmm. I, you, like, and I look at all of our families and it's true yeah. about all of them. You know, it's, it kind of like, we were kind of the last on the tail end of that, yeah. um, class of 98 was, was probably the, the, I think people just had their, sh- like what they say is that, uh, with crack, crack died out because people would see what it would do to people. And so mm-hmm. they were just like, mm, I don't know if it's yeah. worth it, you know? They didn't want to. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so scabby. Yeah. And the, and like, but, but yeah, I mean, Florida is the pain mill capital of the world probably still but you could use like it was I, there were documentaries about it like how like it was just I, there's a hillbilly highway which would be the i mean I, I i don't support the terminology but that's literally what it's called where people from kentucky used to come down mm. to to florida and, and in buses and wow. then just get prescriptions and then since there was no system for regulating stuff you could first of all, you could get a prescription and buy the 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 drug in the same place, which is a bad incentive creation machine <laughs> right there. And then and then because there was no tracking system, people would just chop doctors down. You know, go to one clinic, go to the next, wow. and they would take these buses and take all that stuff up there. And then I forget what I I forget. There's another detail that happened because at a certain point, Kentucky was like, "F this," you know, like we're gonna start doing our own stuff. And I don't know, I don't know, I, like, I'm a little fuzzy on the details after that. Because, like, I only followed it until, like, 2006. Mm. But I recently heard that person that made that documentary talking about it, and I forget all the details. But really, like, after Kentucky was was like, yeah, we don't need to go to Florida anymore. And I think they came up with something. Maybe they started making their own mm. stuff. But That's always dangerous. Yeah. That's what we're seeing now, which is even worse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, with fentanyl, you can't even. I would never. I would never. Be, yeah, I wouldn't survive. No way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. Every once in a while, I'm like, maybe we should do some coke again, you know? And I'm like, nah, it's not worth it. Yeah. Well, I just talked to my friend who made me think about this, but, like, um, my friend um, Chelsea, who's in Detroit, she's started, she's, like, trained herself how to do, like, how to use Narcan, and mm-hmm. she's, like... S- distributing strips sort of like as a service because all the galleries are in neighborhoods yeah. that are a little rough. And I was like, Oh, I don't think that that's it. And then I thought about, it, I was like, Oh my God, I could definitely do that out here. And it would probably help, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like make stuff available at like spaces. Yeah. You know? It's not a bad idea. Yeah. It's a great idea. Yeah. So I want to uh, shout out Chelsea on, on, on thinking stuff that made me think. Good work, Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's cool. She's, she, uh, she has some interesting work too. We we hung out at, at Art Basel. Have yeah. you ever been to Art Basel? Oh, hey, I haven't gone to Basel. Yeah, don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's I'm fine. not really. I'll go, you know, I'll go, but I don't really want to go. Yeah, I just just skip the convention center. Do the the other uh things. Yeah. Uh, Untitled Art Fair is pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So then, where are you headed next? We you're, you're you just got into this looms uh movement Mm -hmm. how how deep are you gonna go are you going to do are you do you have any interest in just like non-felt related looming or weaving so this big loom i just got is uh gonna be a lot more complex so Mm -hmm. i'll be able to make these uh weavings a lot more dynamic and i'm really excited about it i actually have a residency in iceland this summer for all of july oh wow the textile residency in northern iceland and it's all textile based so it's like all looms and they have a digital loom which i'm really excited to learn to use and that's something that we're working on getting at smc actually so that Mm. i want to get trained on that so and i'm also hoping and i'm supposed to be able to while i'm in iceland go to the farm and and actually make my own fibers so you know so shave, from like, shave them and all of oh, that stuff. Wow. yeah so i'm really excited to just kind of dig in i'm a big process nerd and i'm like a big big into learning so i'm constantly like taking workshops or learning new skills it's like i i'm i just can't stop doing it it's like something i love so much so yeah i'm definitely this is i feel like the felt and relationship to video and the weaving is 
really exciting and I'm, I'm pushing, I'm pushing forward with that. There's something about the process when I get to the loom, that's like meditation and mm -hmm. yoga is a big part of my life as well. And so like that idea of like working really chaotically and with these like very chaotic image imagery and over the top work, and then having to sit down and like cut it up and undo it. Uh, it's actually something I used to do with my sculptures all the time, make a mm -hmm. sculpture, cut it up, make something new with it. Uh, so it's interesting to see my, see me doing it again uh, in this work. And then when I'm weaving, it's like sl such a slow process. Like mm -hmm. I have to slow down and, and really be with the work. Uh, and it's, uh, it feels really beautiful. Like I haven't had like a beautiful moment in the work. It's always been like chaotic and fun and playful or fucking hectic and a nightmare. And so it's nice to have this like, because there's a lot of longing in the work as well. Mm -hmm. And so just kind of having that part of the process show up has been. Well, I mean, I've learned so much. I didn't even know. I, I didn't know there was a felt loom. Mm -hmm. I didn't know there was I, all these. This this loom stuff is, is interesting to me, but it's completely. I mean, it's like you're basically buying a piano sized. It's not a gr grand, <laughs> baby grand, but it's like you essentially have two stand up, pia three stand up piano sized instruments for making art in here yeah, yeah it's really great and then my treadmill because i run in the morning so oh it's yeah like a whole, <laughs> i love it's uh, like part of the i met your pug army and i love that you have to have that be to, that, that fence around your you she's got a fence around the um a treadmill in my the studio. treadmill so that the, the pugs <laughs> there's four of them oh my god they were i was like juggle petting <laughs> <laughs> like what would what would come and then i would try to pet him but it was he would they were so excited that they would just like leave and know. then the other one and they just shuffle and i would pat one on the head <laughs> i'm so like cute. slightly embarrassed by the amount of bugs i have but also like whatever um this fucking why, why life would you is be in, weird why would you be like a red flag like oh she's four pugs and it <laughs> seems fucking weird it was two and then one one is really sick and we thought he was gonna die and so we went to rescue chicken. who's who's we uh, now my ex-husband okay. at the time, uh, my husband, um, okay. I didn't, cause I didn't want to be like, were you a bridezilla? And uh, then it turned out <laughs> I was a bridezilla. I didn't have a wedding actually. No, you didn't have a wedding. No, you went I, to the courthouse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when our, that's interesting. You fucking hate weddings now. <laughs> I hate weddings. I wouldn't do it. I think it's a waste of money. It I, is. It is. And I think it's like, you really just want your picture taken when it comes down to it, or you're trying to have a big party, but you're, I feel like if you're gonna, you really need to think about it. Like if you're going out to dinner, who would you want to buy dinner for? Cause you're essentially inviting 200 people that you're paying anywhere from 40 to $75 a person to eat on top of like chair rentals on yeah. top of like napkin rentals and silverware. And alcohol if you're doing alcohol uh music it's like so fucking crazy people are spending anywhere from like a low flower order for a wedding is fifteen thousand dollars jesus for fucking flowers i'm like they're gonna die they're beautiful and you're employing me but at the same time it's like they're gonna fucking die and uh just for this moment that most people forget about because they're drunk or they yeah. are blacked out because they're nervous or they're so worried that other people are not having a good time that they're just consumed that it becomes. No, I mean, weddings are fun. <laughs> I'll go on and on about it. <laughs> no, that, I'm super fascinated. Weddings are fun to attend and they're probably a nightmare to throw. I would, I would probably just be so stressed out. It doesn't seem worth the, yeah. the stress. The wedding planner is usually the worst person. It's actually not really? the bride. It's like the the wedding planner is the person. Oh, because they're the ones that yeah. have to do all the... yeah. Shout out Dana. I love you still. <laughs> a friend of mine is a wedding planner and uh, we're still really good friends, but it's, you have to be a certain person to want yeah. a do that job. Cause you're dealing with the bride constantly and B you're just really like beyond organized in a way that I just don't, I couldn't yeah. live my life with spreadsheets like that. Yeah, I've spent my life eating a lot of shit professionally. <laughs> like, you know, uh, it's it's been nice to be able to work from home and not have to be like customer facing for the first time. Yeah. But oh my god, what what is it that you're? Just the same. I just oh, edit yeah. stuff okay. for like for online. But it's uh, it 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 is like, dude, the the way that people. I okay. I worked at Guitar Center. I don't think I've ever said that on the podcast. Okay. I worked at Guitar Center for a while, and that's cool. The, yeah, but I was in the morning shift, and the amount of old, lonely men oh. that would come 
and, are. and just want to talk about oh. gear and have me validate them. Like it was, it was the weirdest job because I was a scrub to some people, but like a knowledgeable person to others. Right. So yeah. like it was, I mean, I've never been yelled at, like I've been yelled at at that job by, by customers. Mm -hmm. Like one time this dude, uh, I mean, I was almost said his name. <laughs> he was, you can throw it here. No, right I, I just, for legal reasons, I don't want to talk about <laughs> customers of my old company. Um, but yeah, man, it was, it was pretty crazy. And then one of the fun things is just watching like YouTube videos, get everything wrong about how guitar center works. Yeah, that's funny. But yeah, I mean, there. What area did you work in at Guitar Center? Uh, and did you have a department though, or you? Yeah, guitar. Oh, guitars. Yeah, just yeah. in the guitars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can sell anything. I I used to sell like everything, but um, the difference between like selling a guitar is that someone's gonna want to play it for a little while, and you got to give them space, and the person that's wanting to buy gear just wants in and out. Mm -hmm. You know, they just want to know what they get. But it it is it like, it's just wild how people you know, especially during COVID. Mm -hmm. And you had to ask people to put masks on and wash and like use use uh, hand sanitizer mm -hmm. and like the fights that would break yeah. out over that. It's insane how people See. like it's like, bro, I'm at work, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fight you. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm off at three. I you. had do I had I'm not a fighter. I would never I, I like dude, no, I'm all I'm a verbal sparrer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a call you out and make you feel weird about something you did. Yeah, <laughs> not that's good. not like physically that. threaten you. But uh but yeah, no, I, it's wild. Do you, do you get a lot of people that obviously they come into play, right? They're mm -hmm. they come in and that's more like since I was in the mornings. Okay. That's like oh, the, that's the, an afternoon thing. Yeah, okay. that's a, that like it that it really gets loud. That's when you make the better money because it's so packed. But Do you make you mean you make commission? Oh, I not anymore that. though. Or they restructured it like oh. recently. I I don't work there anymore, but I talked to some of the guys that work there, and yeah, they just did a bunch of layoffs and stuff too. Mm -hmm. So it was it was pretty like they are not doing great. Uh, yeah, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. it's uh. Retail. Well, I'm not going to get fired if I say it's been mismanaged. So it's like as a company, <laughs> they just have too many stores and not enough, you know, like they're, they, they are spread so thin Yeah. and they just had a, but like they made a bunch of money doing COVID. Anyway, who cares about Guitar Center? <laughs> Sorry, Guitar Center. We're moving on. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's more about customer service. Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting that you have this dark side that, I mean, it's not that I don't see it in the work. I definitely like it. I see the humor, like the coping mechanism mm -hmm. of the, of humor, and I definitely relate to sort of being. I mean, I'm not that bright in color and vivacious, <laughs> but like definitely nowhere in comparison. <laughs> I'm like muted next to you. <laughs> but in terms of making work, I do like uh, I do like colorful stuff. Thanks. Um, I also started seeing. Um, I'm like a big people that know me know this quite clearly i'm like big into therapy like mm -hmm. I, i'm like love mental health i think everyone needs to go to therapy yeah. uh, and i i switched therapists a year and a half ago to an art therapist mm. and i was really skeptical because i'm an artist and a professor of art and it felt like this could be really cheesy or it could be really fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. And I told her day one, I'm like, listen, bitch, I don't know if these tricks are going to work on me. Like you're going to give me like assignments and ask me stupid shit. And I already know them. I already know what you're trying to do. You know, like I'm a teacher. I work from back. I, you know, I know how to lead from behind and I know, you know, all these things. So, um, she was, she was like, I'm really happy you told me that <laughs> from day one. And it's been this amazing journey with her because I felt like, you know, when we went, I don't know how it was for you, I'm assuming, but, when we went to school, maybe because we're similar in age, mm -hmm. um, there was this big thing about making work um, that people didn't want it to be too personal um, or too therapeutic or uh, anything about really your life. Like it had to enter into this dialogue and zeitgeist of what was going on. And I can just already tell how shitty my program was because they didn't even do that. Yeah, <laughs> Everybody was, was doing, this is about my mommy. <laughs> oh, we didn't have any of that. It was much more like in New York, it was just kind of like, oh, I don't want to fucking hear about your mom, yeah. you know? And, and there is a layer of that I don't want to hear about, but there is also this like, and I think more so now there's a collective after COVID or whatever it is we're in. And, going through collective trauma, right? Mm. Everybody's grieving, whether they know it or not, you're grieving. Like you lost something. There's something that everybody lost. 
And I think that there's so much more to And the government took it from you. No, it's yeah. not that kind of podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hesitated on that one. <laughs> Go it was ahead. good though. It was good. Um, but there's something that's actually like as artists, we're trying to we're we're kind of telling a truth, right, about the human condition and and we're not here by choice. I think a lot of us, we just can't do anything else. Like it's something we have to do. Oh, you mean art? I thought you, for, yeah. at first I thought you meant like being alive and I was like, that resonated too. Yeah. Oh, well, it could be either way. Right. And yeah. so I didn't want to be here. Yeah, it, I did not choose to be here. I mean, uh, it's like a, a, a spoiled kid on a, on a vacation. Exactly. They don't want to be on. Yeah. I don't want to touch the water. Room. Yeah. <laughs> Hence I don't have children because I don't, I don't want to, they didn't we, choose to be here. I don't want to. We went to, uh, we went to give her knee when I was a kid. Uh -huh. and uh and there's a quote i'm not going to credit it because I, it it may be an embarrassing story uh -huh. but <laughs> so I like but, embarrassing stories but uh but somebody in the family I'll, I'll just say i said it i was in a in a in a uh tizzy and i went i don't want to see no stinking flowers <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm imagining Cute. <laughs> as uh, in terms of not wanting to be alive. Yeah. Well, there's that too. And um, so seeing her has been really interesting because there's been this, like, I'm not really good at language a lot of the time. Like I'm so working with her has been fascinating because I have trouble with language sometimes. It's like I, I communicate visually so much easier. And even my students know that when they're telling me ideas, I'm like, you got to draw that shit out. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And so it's been really interesting to like make something and then show it to her and, or she'll give me a prompt and I'll make something and then show it to her. And then she'll talk about the color and the line and, and w why I did these things. And what does that mean? Like what the negative space, like all of these things. It's so interesting to think about just psychologically and how it's relating to something that I'm moving through. So your work is like a Rorschach that she interprets kind yeah, of Yeah. It's so fascinating. Oh, wow. And then she, with that, I like, I'm like, wow, I had, didn't even think about that. And then it helps my work. It's like influencing my work in a way. I didn't think that it would. I thought it would just be a separate thing for yeah, me. Yeah. And it's starting to come into the work in this way that is really, and it's not things I have to tell people, you know, either. It's but not It's not a lot of negative space in your work. <laughs> no, actually, that's like an assignment I have is about erasure and space next, which is coming up. I mean, that's not a criticism. That's an observation yeah. in the context of what you just said. Yeah. Well, the lobster came up. The, the lobster is behind you. He came up in, in uh, one of my prompts and the lobster is... There's in also here, one yeah. There. There's a lobster in there. As Did well. you watch the movie The Lobster? I haven't. I have to watch it. What do you think? <sighs> I keep, that's what yeah. I get, and I don't know if it's mm. a, yeah. No, it's glad good. I watched it. Not sure it's good. Okay, I might do it. That's what I hear a lot. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, I'm I I encourage art therapy. I think it's been fucking wild. That's trend. awesome. That yeah. sounds great. I might. I mean, I was. I've been thinking about going back in. I've been out of therapy for a little while. I'm not like overwhelmed with stuff in a way that I feel like I need it. But, you know, the more and more I do the show, I think the more issues come up that I haven't had before mm -hmm. where of like, just, just, just being exposed. Just, like I feel very exposed. Yeah. I did it to myself and it's good and it, it, I'm not complaining, but it is not something, it's something that you can think, you can think that you're prepared for, mm -hmm. but it's definitely strange. And you have like, I find myself having to, I don't get annoyed by it, but having to remind myself that like, I am not just mm -hmm. schlub me when yeah. I'm at art, art openings. I have to like, be like extra outgoing and, and, and welcoming to people. Yeah. Like, cause it's what I, it's what I, yeah. it has to be true when I do it here. Yeah. <laughs> if I do it, it, like if, if I'm out there, you know, I have to be consistent Yeah. in terms of like, wanting to support artists and, and, and encourage people. Cause I mean, I'm not always in the mood. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that you have to, when you do the work that you're doing, you're, you're holding a lot of space for a lot of other people yes. and as much as like, maybe you're not thinking about it, but you're in the space and you just took in a lot of shit from me. Right. And yeah, like, yeah. You're yeah. going to go home and process it. Not only that, you're going to go home and edit it and then you're going to put it out and then you're going to be concerned with 
whether you like it i like it or who's watching it or how many views you're gonna get and or if i if the pictures that i select for the post on instagram are flattering enough yeah and that's a lot yeah no it does that's where like therapy is great like i think people think they have to go in because there's something that happened no yeah yeah totally totally like i just fill your cup I, i just fell up I just fell off because of timing, you yeah. know, and I was like, yeah. well, I don't really want to restart it off, uh, mm-hmm. up because uh, uh, like it, it was it like, I think it happened around COVID and then uh, all the economy was shut down. And then all of a sudden I got my job back and I was like working several mm-hmm. hours. So I didn't contact the, like I was going through a university program, mm-hmm. which I think is actually a pretty good option if you're, if you're, if you need sliding scale, because yeah. uh, they will charge you uh, as much as you can afford. Yeah. And, and, and the other advantage to that is there's a disadvantage is that your therapists graduate but the advantage is that they're supervised. Mm-hmm. So you're not just with some guy that's not a, like I've had to, a therapists that are old dudes mm-hmm. that haven't read up on any <laughs> new, yeah. t- new, yeah. new like uh, stuff. So so it's good to have that, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's I'm, it's more of being lazy about going and setting it up. <laughs> like if it was already set up, I, I would be I going. You know, get what I'm I saying? Totally got it. But but it, I think also. It's been good to sort of just realize how much I can handle now mm-hmm. after having done it, you know? So like that's, it was, that, that's kind of where I'm at. I probably will start going back into it because I am a little bit isolated working from home and stuff like that. Yeah. And like, and I'm also like in desperate need of friends that aren't in the art world. Mm-hmm. Like I thought, I thought I could just have friends in the art world and I'm now realizing like, no, these motherfuckers know each other. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, except for we're, we can be friends. We're yeah. realizing we aren't having a lot of crossover. We don't know. Yeah. No, I mean, it's not, I don't go out enough though. That's the thing. I like, don't go to open. I get really weirded out. With... Well, what's your scene? Like what do, do you have a space that you associate with a lot? Like uh, somewhere that you hang out that go regularly to their openings and stuff uh, where um, you might know people. I, it just depends on, you know, when it was, when everything was in Culver city, I used to go all the time. Yeah. And then I left, I was in the desert for seven years. So, uh, I just got back six, eight months ago. So I just don't really, Is it, was this, was this pre or post husband or, um, I'm currently going through a divorce. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so moving back has been, I just haven't plugged in enough and I, I'm just not really. Kudos to you for not talking about that. <laughs> about what? Your divorce. Oh yeah. I don't need to give it air. Uh, <laughs> no, I just applaud you. Cause um, I mean, that's the kind of thing that's just always under the surface. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a big. I didn't even notice that oh, you God, had I'm anything. So you glad. seem so upbeat. Like yes. you're not, like you're not burdened by one of the most difficult things people go through it in life. Totally a difficult thing. And yeah. I, I don't want to say that it's not, but it's also like. You know, we, I, can we throw you a divorce party? Sure. When it goes through, <laughs> we can do that. Yeah. Um, he's a great human and yeah, know, no, no, great no, times no. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to give we, it air, but I think, it, you know, but if you're going through it and you want a friend, I'm totally there. <laughs> I'm like totally down to cry with you at any time. It's fucking hard. Yeah. Um, but the socializing, I, I don't know what it is. I get like really, um, I don't know. I don't know if it's shy or I just don't like going it's like a scene and I just get really overwhelmed and I'm not good at like faking relationships. Like the water cooler talk is really hard for me. A small talk is really hard for me. Um, and then the, like, I know you're supposed to go show up at the spaces you want to be shown in like a Mm -hmm. lot. And I just have a hard time with that as well. Like, I just, I don't know. I know, I know I need you to work, but, and I'm sure more people relate to this and then are admitting it, but it's like, it's fucking I'm not judging you. Yeah. Yeah, it's It's like, yeah. And it's socially, it's a lot of social stuff and, yeah. I, and that gets, you know, you need like a buddy to go with. And I often, you know, don't know who to go with I guess, yeah. or something like that. So I'll yeah, be better. It, I'm going to work it's, on it. It's, it's not easy. It's, I, and, and, uh, sometimes I do like going to places that I am somewhat anonymous. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, not that I'm like super well known, but like the, my, the Bendix building, I know a lot of people, yeah. you know, because, so I mean, specifically when I don't go to the Bendix building and I'm not like, and I'm, and I, and I can just kind of blend in mm-hmm. and, and hang out. Like that's a, that's a relief to me too. Yeah. Cause, uh, cause the Bendix is is fun and and it, i really like all the spaces there tsa is great all the mm-hmm. people in tsa people in monta vista are awesome At, like all the spaces durden and ray is cool but um but yeah i mean 
when you go to those spaces, you like see all your friends, but mm-hmm. it's not, it's almost like it's, it, it's satisfying, but it's not a satisfying hang too. You know, yeah. like you're like, you, you hung out, you had some wine maybe, and you talked for a little bit, but it's not the same thing as like doing a podcast even, yeah. you know, like, I mean, if we hung out at a, at an opening, I wouldn't know how dark your soul is. <laughs> I have a really dark soul. Hey, hey. We just like scratch the surface. K- kindred spirits. <laughs> I, I am yeah. also very dark. I, it, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. I, I don't know. What, I think it is the chaos. It doesn't yeah, surprise chaos. me. And you know, the eggs are like, um, I don't have children. I don't want children. And I'm going to be 40 next month. And it's something that is shocking to me how many people want to talk about my fucking uterus like really? all the time. And it's like, so I always have the, and also I'm, I love comedy. Like I'm like a stand up comedy, mm-hmm. um, whatever we can't, we're not saying those words. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it starts with a W H. <laughs> yes, exactly. And, um, so I, I do that. I go to that more than anything, I think. Um, and I really Wait, love you, you go to, you go to shows oh, like yeah. stand up. Where do you, yeah. where do you go? Oh, yeah. dude, if, if you need a buddy. <laughs> yeah. I like to go any, like, I really like people. Like I, I went to, I go to Largo a lot. There's okay. a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Largo. Largo is a really fun space too. And those, um, pop-up ones that happen in like people's front yards. I forgot the name of them. They're oh, really cool. I've been out of it. I I tried stand up for a little while. Really? And yeah, I was into it, and then I, I what I ended up realizing is that I spent seven years learning how to be an artist, and I was going to spend another like just transition and yeah. start a new craft that's like really hard and lonely, and you're on the road. And I was yeah. like, fuck that. <laughs> that's when I was little. They asked me what I wanted to be, and I was like, either a comedian or an artist. And I was like, that's well, fucking bleak. Yeah, you know, these <laughs> are bleak features. So, and I love going to see people who are no one, like they're trying out their stuff. I love the comedy store. Um, I mean, there's I, I'll go anywhere. I I, do, I went to an open mic down at a. Uh, um, open mics are rough. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't open mic. It was a comedy night. They do once a month in Long Beach, which is mm-hmm. funny to me. Anything in Long Beach is funny to me. Um, and at a tiki bar. Okay. And it was actually really fucking good. There was this weird music magician. Anyways. Uh, is it the Comedy Magic Club? No. that's No, you said it's a tiki it bar. It was a tiki bar. The so, Comedy Magic Club is weird. Oh, I need to go there. Yeah. I'll go anywhere. I, I like it. I'd love to go once. I go to a lot of comedy. Yeah. So it, that comes into the work as well. Um. But the eggs, yeah, this idea of like, so, you know, like throwing an egg at someone, this, the old slapstick comedy that comes in, in from that. But the idea that like my I eggs associated are, with protesting and protesting, <laughs> yeah, I'm an activist as well. We didn't even talk about that. But the, um, the idea of like, uh, I, people ask me, um, tell me I better hurry up or did you freeze your eggs or you're running out of time? Um, there, you know, I developed early as a, as a young, as a young woman, I got boobs before other people in my grade. And so it was like you're fucked either way because the girls hate you and the boys follow you around. And, and it was, you know, in sixth grade I had tits and, and my mom would say, <laughs> that's the first time anyone said that on this show. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only nub I'll give you. And then I'm out of here. This. But the, um, you know, my mom, I'd come home really upset about it because the girls would say that I stuffed my bra and the boys would want to touch my boobs. And it's like this whole, and then it becomes Whoa, this whole yeah. thing of like, well then prove it, you know, it's like, oh, so publicly get felt up in front of everybody. And, um, my mom would say, well, and I would tell her like, none of the, all the boys are talking to me, but they don't look at me. They're just staring at my boobs. And she's like, that's fine. Just ask them what color your eyes are. Every time they do that, it's embarrassing for them because then they have to look up at you. And so there's a lot of these eggs on the eyes, just kind of re- referring <laughs> to this kind of like tits and ass thing. And, yeah. Like, and yeah, my eggs are fried probably, or they're getting there and that's okay with me. Yeah, you know, but there's a lot of it comes up all the time. People ask me how old I am, and then they're like, "Oh, how many kids do you have? Oh, you're not. What do you mean you're not having kids? Oh, you're gonna regret that." There's a whole, wow. Yeah, I got a whole lecture at spring break by this woman that just went on and on to me. This about was it. like someone Some just stranger. looking at your art. Yeah. yeah. Who? Yeah, and then she told me I was gonna be all right. That I had a good face <laughs> and okay chompers, and I would be all right in this world. I was like, thank you for that. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. It comes up all the time. It's like a whole, it's super annoying. I will uh, tell you this. There are guys that on Hinge apps and stuff like that are actively looking for don't want children. Oh, so okay. So okay. you don't. So when I'm you, ready for Hinge. Well, I mean, I mean, those guys maybe aren't going to get in your face about it. Okay. All right. All right. Hinge. Guys. Because it's, it's a little creepy to be like, do you want children? 
Oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> but it seems That's like true. it's the inverse of that. I'm just saying that okay. not everybody, not every guy wants kids. Okay. Yeah. It, I get most shit from women. Actually. Yeah. No, I'm sure. You know, yeah. it's like an interesting. It's just all the men in legislation that care yeah, about yeah, my yeah. uterus. <laughs> yeah. 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 No one's going to do anything about it, guys. Yeah. Keep voting. <laughs> Neither side. Good luck with that. <laughs> oh, now I kind of get your activism. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because you didn't find that upsetting. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a good one to end on. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> I mean, great. we're not going to get higher than that. <laughs> this was so lovely. Uh, I feel it's like so we fun. should be friends. I don't mean to impose that on yeah, you. but, but I'd I'm, love to be your friend. Uh, you should come out to the Bendix. I know you don't like doing that, and I just kind of bitched about it a little bit. But it's actually kind of fun, I'll come and to the and um, it's just what makes it easy is that it's all vertical, so you can get a lot of it's stuff. In done. One space, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I love yeah. that. One that, stop shopping is yeah. my jam. But okay, so what can we promote for you? Uh, website, Instagram, yeah. Emily Silver is it's just at Emily Silver. Is there's no weird Emily Silver Studio is Studio, my Instagram. Okay. Yeah, no underscores. That's no, that's the weird thing. No underscores at okay. Emily Silver Studio, and I I post on there mostly and that you know i'm bad at updating my website but I yeah i mean no that. one no one does that <laughs> yeah yeah i'm in a group show opening april 8th i don't know if this layer before then but that's in the desert at compound yucca valley um and yeah residency this summer residency this summer yeah. cool well thank you so much for being on the show i really enjoyed talking to you and it it's fun. always it's always nice <laughs> when you find another dark soul <laughs> yeah, that is. that has managed to cope you like because I know that you dip your toe in the dark side, uh -huh. but you you know how to do it. Yeah, I daily <laughs> dip it in. And yeah. then you're like, but you you but it's, it's like I'm having I'm having fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's part of life, right? Yeah. You got to shine light on it. So yeah, for sure. Great. It's better it's better to be awake in the misery than to pretend that you're like in a happy place where somebody's gonna come and save you from uh, anti-abortion legislation. <laughs> <laughs> Wake the fuck up! Yes. <laughs> Oh my God. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back next week with another artist and another topic that may or may not be art related. We kind of straddled the line. I would like to assess <laughs> after I say that, how we did in terms of art. Yeah. I, I, you know, We're good. We did yeah, it. We, we went back we, and forth. Yeah. Yeah. It's still an art podcast. Yeah. All right. Thanks guys. Bye. <laughs>